our voice to this issue that oil companies operating in the Niger Delta should be able to put offices in places where they are doing business. That way, the people can have a sense of belonging. That way, partnership can be seen to have been built. That way, the tension and the um, rancor that presently exists between oil producing companies and their host communities will be seen to be reduced. I therefore urge my colleagues, distinguished honorable members, to please support this motion and ensure that it sees the light of this day with a view to realizing the main objective of this motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, distinguished colleagues. Number one, Mr. Speaker, um, I believe the Nigerian content, the Local Content Act has taken care of the major issue that my honorable colleague has brought out now. If you look at section 25 of the Nigerian Content Act, it clearly states that where applicable, before carrying out any work or activity in Nigeria, the operator or body submitting a plan shall establish in the catchment area where the project is to be located, a project office where project management and procurement decisions making are to take place to the, sat to the satisfaction of the board. Mr. Speaker, section 27 of the Local Content Act clearly states also, subject to section 25 of this act, the board shall have powers to require any operator in the oil and gas industry to maintain an office in a community where the operator has significant operations. So I believe the Local Content Act clearly takes um, care of this. And the amendment I'd like to make, Mr. Speaker, is um, the Committee of Local Content, I think, should be the main committee in charge of this. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for giving me the opportunity to talk. Honorable. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. My name is Honorable Widre Ekotai, member representing NECET ONA S. NECET. Even of federal constituency, I'm from Akwaibom State. I want to first of all thank the mover of this motion because it directly affects where I represent. And the time is long overdue. Having uh, cognizance of the Local Content Act, that the oil companies and oil and gas companies of Nigeria have totally refused and breached the Local Content Act. And as such, this motion will remind them, if they have forgotten, that they have operational base in the Niger Delta region. And as we know that, oil and gas remain central to Nigeria money economy because it accounts for about 95% of our exports, with Nigeria having 37.2 billion barrels of oil and gas resources in Niger Delta region as reserve and is the largest oil and gas producing country in Africa and 11th in the world. When other commodities were used where Nigerians depended on other commodities, we saw that they had their base as the operational base, they have the operational base and the administrative base. But in, in the case of oil, the issue is different. We have the oil company in my federal constituency, Exxon Mobil. It has operated before even I was born, but till today we only have an we have operational base, no administrative base, and the, my, my constituents has been persuading them, agitating in one way or the other to see that they bring this, they bring their administrative base to Aquaibom State, but they have refused. Before they used to give us excuse that there is no airport, no accessible road, but I'm pleased to announce to uh, ExxonMobil and other oil companies that Aquaibom now has an airport, has a uh, good accessible road, and we are being, uh, we are being cheated. Because sometimes this um, ExxonMobil or other IOCs, they give uh, servicing companies 
jobs they come and do their job with only portfolio sometimes they stay in the hotel and go and they don't have any office to show and sometimes many a times they don't even have they don't even have their social responsibility they don't do it at all we don't even know they just come in as uh, sometimes like rogues and they move away we only see them coming in through one uh, higher taxi and they move away they don't even have anything to show in in the region that there is anything we they come in cut our wealth take it to somewhere without any recourse to us so from honorable colleagues i announce i support this very very important motion that the oil companies and should bring their administrative headquarters to where they operate sometimes they say that they we are militant because when they say that there is no safety but if there is if they refuse to bring the administrative headquarters to where they operate people will be eager to know what are they hiding for if you agitate they will say you are causing problem if you don't agitate they will just sit tight they won't do anything no taxes is paid to us no royalty is paid to us we are just left like that they exploit our wealth and take it to somewhere else nothing to show a case in Aquaibom now there is a road that the state government is doing that is worth 46.7 billion naira mobile because of oil spill decided to give us palliative measure they call it palliative and then a person sum of 8 billion the job was not done the contractor left the site about 2013 now the state government came up and took over the job in 2015 to 2015 2016 2017 and then they have put a very big signboard that they are doing joint uh, joint venture with with the nnpc in being they are not sensitive at all to the plight they are not inciting the public against the government sometimes they even incite the public against themselves and the youth of my constituency are saying that this is wrong we know that it's the state government that have done this road if they had gotten their administrative headquarters in in Aquaibom, the the youth of the of the of the state would have gone to them to tell them their problem but before they would go to where the administrative headquarters is it will be too far and nobody to listen to them so i want to plead with all of us please my honorable colleagues honorable speaker that this motion is very apt and the and the nigerian oil and gas companies should as a matter of fact as a matter of very important relocate their headquarters the administrative headquarters to their operational base. Thank you. Colleagues, my name is Honorable Randolph Ewo Oreni Brown. I represent Degema Bonifera Consuensi. In fact, one of the best things that is happening to us today is, the, is this motion moved by my brother Nana. There is a general saying that without truth, there cannot be justice. And without justice, there cannot be peace. And a popular musician also said, everybody is crying for peace, but no one is, crying, is talking about justice. I will not want to go into the economic um, details my brother and I had gone in. These are facts, and um, nobody, these are facts nobody can be labeled. But I will use NLNG as an example, NL Engine, because of the operation, their main operational base, everybody that's involved in the operation is located where the plant is. And because they are located there, nobody suspects them. We quarrel, we fight, but we are still living together because those that are operating are living there. The cause of the problem in the Niger Delta is as a result of the hide and seek that these multinationals are playing. And until they come out of it, today it's even worse because all their business transactions are carried out through the internet. Nobody sees them. So the only thing that people from the Niger Delta will know that these companies are operating is by relocating their operational base to the Niger Delta. So if they go away today, I wish members would take a, a look or a trip to Loibri. You will not know that that is where the first commercial oil was struck in the country. 
the people are as poor and had nothing to show for it. So we pray, honorable speaker, honorable colleagues, to please, with all sense of responsibility, support this motion and let it be carried out in its entirety. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, for giving me this opportunity once again to make contribution on this uh, important uh, motion. And uh, I quite I commend the mover of the motion. I don't expect otherwise. It's proven to be a good representative of his people. But however, I want us to be very careful and practical uh, and remove sentiment in our uh, proposal. And uh, whatever motion that we pass in this house, uh, we should be mindful of the ability of the concerned agency organization to carry out our resolution. Uh, in the case of the oil, uh, international, multinational oil companies operating in Nigeria, um, if you look at their operational peculiarities, apart, drilling activity constitutes a major component, no doubt about it, of their operation. But there are other departments, finance, marketing, and some others. And they also require infrastructure to support their operation. And all these factors determine the location of their headquarters. If anybody that is familiar with the operation will know that there is nowhere they have their drilling activities that they do not have uh, administrative presence. And what, rather than the requesting that the headquarters should be located where drilling activities are taking place, you know, I think we should get ourselves familiar with the local content bill as earlier uh, mentioned, and also the NDDC Act, where they are, I mean, uh, by which they are expected to make contributions towards the uh, provision of infrastructure and other uh, uh, support uh, uh, services to their host communities. And uh, I will also rather urge us, you know, to strengthen the instrument that will compel them to be alive to their social, corporate social uh, responsibilities. Let us ask the question, we are a, uh, an oil company has drilling activities in more than two or three states. Do we expect them to open administrative offices or headquarters? Which of the, which of the states would we expect them to open their headquarters. So rather, I would suggest that we should be mindful of the practicability and the economics involved. Minority Leader, a point of order. And after you are done, you approach the chair. And specifically, Order 9, Rule 3, two, that's 3, Sub 2, a member may speak for or against the motion. I don't know what my colleague is doing, whether he's speaking against the motion or he's speaking for, and he, 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 his, his, his presentation shows very clearly that he's speaking against the motion. So I believe that he should allow those of us that want to speak for the motion to finish speaking then, you know, he cannot go against the motion. It's important that, you know, we address this issue parliamentarily, sir. Thank you. Is that uh, we should be we should consider to the IOCs, you know, in our, our resolution. What my position, therefore, is that uh, rather than requesting that they relocate their headquarters from where they are presently operating, you know, 
we should encourage them to be alive to their corporate social responsibilities. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My name is Uche Inamobi, and I represent the good people of Ahodo West and Oba Ebem and Doni, federal constituency. I'm from River State. Mr. Speaker, I'd like to begin by saying that it is easy to become parochial when it affects you. I come from the Niger Delta. I am an Omoku man. I come from an area where there is environmental pollution. Now, I would not want to join issues with my colleague, but face what we have on ground, which is to say that I support this particular motion roundly. I want to thank my brother who has deemed it necessary to bring this to the fore. First of all, I'd like to say that the vice president is a Lagos man. And just recently in Akwaibom, he directed, having gone around the Niger Delta, that the corporate headquarters return to the areas where the oil exploration is taking place. Now, first of all, if we go down the lane, apart from what the people are going through in terms of infrastructural decay, in terms of employment, because we know that if they move back, our people are going to be gainfully employed. I'm not saying that Nigerians shouldn't be employed. Now, the Local Contact Act did not say that they should open pseudo offices or miniature offices in the areas where oil exploration is taking place. What it says is that they should own offices, even if we're going to have the administrative one, but not the headquarters in Lagos. Because tax, when they're taxed, revenue will accrue to our states, especially the Niger Delta states. And then it also shows that if the infrastructural decay is going on, the federal government should also rise to its responsibility. We know that the 13% derivation is on. We know about NDDC, but I think they should do more. Now, there is a correlation between that and what's going on there in terms of the, 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 the life, the quality of life for the Niger Deltans. We talk about ag agitation. It has a lot to do with insecurity. If these things are in place, if this headquarters is moved, it will actually stem or cut down this agitation to the barest minimum. So I'd like to thank my brother for this motion and reiterate the fact, fact that these headquarters should move back to the Niger Delta. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sheriff. Colleagues, I rise to support this motion because it is very important coming from a state probably potentially an oil producing state very soon, inshallah. Honorable colleagues, Mr. Speaker, it should be mandatory for all the oil companies to have their administrative offices in where they are getting the poor, where they are exploiting those oils. It is only fair. It takes only a common sense because by operating elsewhere, they are depriving the host communities of employment and some economic activities. And therefore, they should not only be asked, but they should be mandated to relocate to the host communities, to the Niger Delta areas, and operate there, their offices. It is not fair for them to be elsewhere while also they are taking the crude in the Niger Delta. So my, 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 my contribution is, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, they should be mandated not asked. They should be mandated within a very short period of time to relocate their offices to the host communities. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and honorable colleagues. I represent the good people of Oka North and Oka South Federal Constituency. I'm from Anambra State. Mr. Speaker and my dear colleagues, it is very painful, it is worrisome, and it is devilish for Nigerians, some Nigerians, to be siding multinational companies to undermine national interest and Nigerian interest. Mr. Speaker, it is very clear that where a man works, his office should be there. If the multinational companies are saying the excuse is that there is a lot of insecurity in those areas where they operate, this security does not stop them from drilling the oil, but it stops them from having office. Whatever security they have in the operational basis, in the areas where they work, they should provide such security where they have administrative offices. Mr. Speaker, it is very clear that these multinationals are taking out Nigeria for a ride. 
because Nigerians are colluding with them. For very, very myopic, very selfish reasons. A lot of these multinationals do not take the interest, do not take the safety of lives of Nigerians into consideration in doing anything. And who, those Nigerians that are supposed to speak out against those things, just go to them, collect pitans, and support them. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to add clearly, very clearly, that we should do everything to ensure that these multinational companies operate offices, administrative offices, where they operate. That really. Because somebody was talking of having in three states. That's a very simple thing. You are having three operations. You should have three offices. It is not our responsibility to think of the economic in interests of the multinationals. We should think of the interests of Nigerians. If they have office, for instance, if they are exploring oil in a white bomber, they have office, they should be able to have enough good access road to the office. They should employ local staff from the locality. They are creating employment. They should be social service. Because those of them that to work in the office will live within the vicinity and they should have good schools around. But the situation where they operate in Akwaibam Bama, they have the office in Lagos. And they pay their taxes in Lagos. And tomorrow, the Lagos people will tell us that the revenue they collect, internally directed revenue, tripled up with that of Nigeria. But not being fair, revenue from where? From what? So let us insist, Mr. Speaker, that those companies must go back to the operational basis and have a central office. If they want to have office in Abuja, let them start exploring oil in Abuja. If they want to have office in Lagos, let them commence the exploration of oil in Lagos. You don't pay the you don't just rob Paul and pay Paul, Peter. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Produce uh, crude oil. Uh, this discussion is, because, uh, is uh, assuming a sentimental dimension. Uh, I want to draw the, the attention of uh, the mover of the motion and all contributors and all the members to the fact that it is possible for an oil company to exploit oil from more than one state. And there are about seven or nine states now, including Lagos, where oil is being exploited. Do we now have headquarters of these oil companies in all the states where they export our oil? Rather, and two, Given the fact that this is a motion, it's not a bill, even if it is passed, can we compel them to uh, move their headquarters to any of the states? And can it be said that this type of uh, prayer should come via a bill? I would rather want to join the mover of this motion, that we should, now that the constitution is under review, it is important that the royalty, even if it is one percent, should be an EU of uh, the constitution. We should not continue to say because a 13 percent derivation is given to states, which the communities, the communities don't have influence or power over what the way this 30 percent goes. There should be a royalty, at least one percent royalty, to be a constitutional provision for every community where oil is exploited. This one will settle that community. It is not particularly the building, the structure of the headquarters that will develop a community. No, it is not the building. So if we know that an oil company can uh, exploit oil from more than one state, two, three, four at a time, where would the headquarters be? So what I would rather advocate is that there should be a percentage now for royalty that should go to the community, any community where oil is being exploited. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. To operate you know, you, to have your headquarters or your office or whatever, where you operate. But they must have been forced by some uh, circumstances beyond their control to move out of uh, that comfort zone, to go somewhere where they feel more comfortable. 
These people are being killed. They are being kidnapped. They are being ex all kinds of extortions. Then they feel it is better they now devise means of surviving. And then now you want to force them to come back to that place to continue you know, being harassed, killed, and, 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 uh, and kidnapped. I feel you're being very unfair to them. So I think this motion is ill-conceived, and uh, it should be thrown out. And I think the, 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 the PIB, when it eventually passed, will take care of these issues as to host communities, what percentage is, uh, I, I think that is the main issue anyway. If, like, they are not getting uh, the revenue that they should get from these oil companies, well, the PIB will take care of the uh, percentage that is given to host communities in any case. So I think um, uh, uh, I would urge my colleagues to please uh, this container this uh, motion. Thank you. Honorable Jagawa. Colleagues, I rise to oppose this motion. You know, looking at um, the last two speakers, what they said, first and foremost, Mr. Speaker, we are talking a royalty. Let somebody come with that bill, but I know there is 12 percent derivation royalty that has been given, and many other things that have been handled by one law or the other. Now you are talking about relocation. The only one point I will add to what they have already said before me. Those drilling oil in the high sea, are we telling them to go and relocate to high sea or what? These are things that are not possible. As far as I'm concerned, if a community is oil is being drilled in one community or the other, the atmosphere must be created, good atmosphere, romantic atmosphere must be created to lure these companies to go there and stay. But once you have crisis, kidnapping and all these things going on, we shouldn't compel them to do what is not possible. For the, for the sake of national security, I want to urge my uh, colleagues to actually make sure this uh, motion is strong. And uh, Mr. Speaker, if you go by it, Lagos, for instance, we can have the federal government we generate a lot of revenue from Lagos State too. One day, we may be tempted for another motion or bill to come on this floor. That for the fact that Abuja, the money that's being used to run Abuja is from that place, so we should move the National Assembly to that place. Either to the Niger Delta or move it to Lagos. If we go by the point that where revenue is generated, we should move to that headquarters should move to that place. I think that is not good for the democracy, it's not good for the system. So I urge my colleague to do a penalty shootout with this motion so that it will go. Thank you. Leader. The, the mover of the motion is a very good friend who I have a lot of respect for. But Mr. Speaker, there are practical issues that may not be we may not be able to practicalize here. First of all, I believe there has been a clamor in Nigeria for the enactment of the PIB. The PIB is a bill, a voluminous bill, that comprehensively addresses every issue when it comes to oil exploration, oil production, and operations. And I believe if there's anything, there might even be something to do with the, in terms of uh, the headquarters and the operations of oil offices in that, in that bill. Uh, so we need to look at that. And if there isn't, then that needs to be, involved, to be included in the bill. Not exactly the way honorable, but they said by way of motion. But then let's look at the practicality of this, uh, this motion. I believe Lagos and even some other southwestern parts are already classified as all producing uh, states. So, including Borno, I'm being told here. So, yes, so what happens to those states? Are we asking that these oil companies relocate to Borno, to relocate to all these other, all these other states? I think we should, should live well and well alone. There are security operations, uh, implications. Mr. Speaker, we talk about the ease of doing business. That's the mantra in Nigeria today. Ease of doing business. So if you're talking about ease of doing business, why are you compelling or attempting to compel oil companies 
who have been here for decades for youngs doing their work, doing their business, serving the host communities, and now asking them to go to relocate get to areas that to, up till today are not secure for them. You might have the adverse effect. They might decide to shut down because their lives may be at, at stake at this point. So, Mr. Speaker, it is important, perhaps the mover of the motion did not consider the security implications. Then we do not want to also start a situation where we, we say, once this place is producing something, then you must move to that place and have your headquarters there. There are, called, there are states that mine. There are mining states. They have operational offices, but it's not necessary that the admin offices be there. We are setting a bad precedent. Are you going to ask embassies, wherever they issue visas, wherever they operate, embassies should also move the administrative offices to those states? Are we going to ask shipping companies, most of whom are in Lagos, that they must, as a matter of law, have their admin, admin offices even ministries, federal government ministries must now relocate to Lagos, where shipping is concerned or whatever activity is going on in Lagos. Mr. Speaker, I think it's very important that we look at this issue very seriously and distinguish and differentiate between operational offices and admin offices or headquarters. I think there's a subtle difference there. And I believe these oil companies have some kind of presence already in the areas where they operate. I think it is dangerous for us as a country. Policies are very important, Mr. Speaker. Policies of a country, particularly when it affects economy and foreign investment, is very important. When these companies came in, we did not tell them, this is what you have to do. You cannot now begin to move or shift the goalpost in the middle of the game, particularly where it will affect their personal, their, their lives, and their operations. So whilst, what, anyway, <clears throat> what's the point of order, minority leader? I, again, and I'm going to read specifically rule one sub four, and I will take on another one eight. Please go to page 39. A member must confine his contribution to the subject matter under discussions I may not introduce any matter irrelevant thereto. No member shall impute improper motive to any other member. Mr. Speaker, my colleagues, I find it totally unacceptable that from the majority leader to stand before this parliament and claim that the Niger Delta region is not safe Knowing fully well that even some of the places he's mentioning, Lagos, Bonu, have some challenges at this particular time. What is good for the goose is good for the gander. This is where this product is being produced on a daily basis. And you are in Lagos collecting tax and you are saying we have no right to ask questions. And I find I it totally unacceptable. Point. You cannot in any way tell us. Please, let me learn. No, no, no. no please, that is what you said. You cannot in any way tell us that the Niger Delta is not safe and you can exploit oil in the place. It's not okay, I've, I've had that, please. Um, there's no need for tempers to flare. Uh, we will maintain the tradition of this house, which is that we look at the issues dispassionately, please. So I'm looking at it as um, from the point of view of business. I'm not even joining the debate. Assuming everything is okay, the Niger Delta area is peaceful, um, is very convenient and conducive for doing business. But if I'm an investor, do you tell me really where to locate my office? Or will those considerations be made based on cost-benefit analysis if I am an investor? So that is, that is one critical aspect that we have to address. Yes, the issue of security or no security is not even important. Yes, that is the aspect that we have to address. Yes, Mr. Speaker, thank you so much. Uh, I, I, and again, if I may continue my place. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, you have rightly observed the crux of the matter. We have to understand that a business is a corporate entity. 
A business is considered a legal personality. And you cannot force somebody where to reside or where to live. You cannot tell me, if I choose now where I work here in Abuja, if I choose to fly into Abuja every single day from Lagos to come and attend to my business, you cannot force me that as a legislator, I must live in Abuja. You cannot force somebody who is in Niger State who drives 30 minutes down. That he, no, 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 please. Please. You have a right. A, a, order, order. Like I said, a business is a corporate entity and is endowed with all those rights and privileges. All those rights and privileges as any other juristic person. So, Mr. Speaker, back to what we were saying, the, uh, I, I believe, like you have rightly observed, you cannot move the goalpost in the middle of the game and say, now that you've been here for how many years, this is what we, what we want you to do. The PIB is, at, is there to address all these issues. It is not for us to bring a motion and say, if you work here, you must live here. If you work there, you must live there. That is totally going out of the scope of our, of our mandate. And for the minority leader to say that, to talk about a place not, be, a place not being safe, you, you can say you disagree with me, but don't say it is irrelevant. That is the most relevant part of, what, of this debate. It is absolutely relevant. So please, I, I, I want to, to urge colleagues, I want to urge colleagues that we please, please look at this motion dispassionately, like the speaker said, discard of it, and if there is a need, bring it to the PIB, let us enact the PIB, not piecemeal, not piecemeal motions that cannot be enforced, that are not practical. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Dr. Ms. Tani Abdu. I represent al Kaleriki Federal Constituency and I'm from Bochi State. Sir, I want to join the army of people opposing this motion. And this is because of the underpinnings of business, as you said. Sir, business information sensitivities, particularly international businesses, have contagion effect all over. Sir, Nigeria, we already have bad names in doing business internationally. And oil and gas business have international connotations. To this effect, sir, we have had in this administration trying to reinvent ourselves, trying to rebrand, trying to diversify. And whatever signal we went and we put across will have effect on other parts of our businesses. Sir, we should not send wrong images. We should not send wrong signals to the international committees, particularly businesses. Businesses look at their own calculations, if you put it, and see where they can safely operate, where they can make their profits. The only thing you tie them to some social corporate responsibilities and the laws of the land. And we cannot continue when there are Rakama, there are all other things to come and start, you know, bringing piecemeal approach to this. And to that effect, I think we have to build confidence, and in order to build confidence, it's just to step down this motion because it has no place and allow business a, a, a level playing field to operate, and then we move forward. Thank you, sir. Move to Minority Leader first, then. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Comment. Okay. And I state without... Leader, what's your point of order? Minority Leader, there's a point of order. Let's listen to the point of order. All those four. You have called those four. And then you now said, is there anybody against? And we spoke against. No, no, no. No, no. No, no, no. We cannot go back and forth. Mr. Speaker, he had the minority leader had his opportunity when people were debating for the bill. And he did not. If you want to ask, if you want to plead with me, or plead with the speaker, or plead with the speaker, <laughs> then we can talk about that. But we must follow the rules. If you want to suspend. Well, the leader is absolutely right, truly speaking. Um, when it comes to motion, those who speak for the motion will take their turn first, and those who will speak against the motion will now take their turn. But unfortunate thing is that um, we just had a member who started speaking against the motion when we hadn't ruled that it was now time for those who will speak against the motion. 
And so it has been like, um, the house of people will say, um, what is it called now? <laughs> the in intestines of the ostrich. Some parts are edible, some parts are poison. So I don't know how we'll do it now, but in view of the fact that we have mixed the debate, I will plead that um, there should be an administrative fiat that will continue that way until we round up the debate. So, Minority Leader. Standing. Let me first and foremost, Mr. Speaker, state that these oil companies that we talk about today are companies that where the federal government, the federal government of which we are part of, owns 49% interest. Two, let's take a clear example like a country like United States of America. And I'm going to give you a clear example, Texas. In Texas, that is where oil is in America, which is the same thing like the Niger Delta region. All the oil companies and their headquarters are all in Texas. I don't see any oil company in Washington or in uh, Alabama. Please. <laughs> Can you let me land? It is important, Mr. Speaker, that we know what we call cost oil. And when, when you talk about cost oil, which I know you are aware of, it is we, the Nigerian people, that are paying for this unexpected and unacceptable expenditures. Where an office is located, probably outside these zones. Take an example in Lagos. They have the liberty of flying continuously. You will have to appreciate the fact that we are stakeholders in the oil industry as a nation. And where you have to look at cost oil, these oil companies will deduct every expenses incurred first before now we have to start looking at our return. And who bears the bond? It is me, you, and the Nigerian people that bears the expenses. And what are we talking about? From one angle, we are talking about localization of industries. Here is a company where we all have states. And when we talk about localization of industry, which we all studied even at the primary and secondary school level, it is closer to the source of raw material. That's where you cite your industries. If we can drill oil in the Niger Delta, be able to pump all the oils in the Niger Delta, and even when our vice president went to the Niger Delta, he made a speech and he said yes knowing fully well that this is where oil is being drilled, it is important that every other oil company relocate to this specific geopolitical zone where oil is being Can you yeah. let me learn, Femi? Mr. Speaker, it's very important that you vice president of Nigeria. He said it now. What is your problem? No, he says so. Uh-uh. What are you talking? Sit down. No. It. Minority leader, please, can you, can you round up your debate? Mm. And I want to say, Mr. Speaker, that because we are all stakeholders, including everybody here, including the common man on the streets of Nigeria, as stakeholders, it is our collective responsibility to protect our resources so that we don't allow wasteful expenditure in line with what is happening as of today. We cannot afford to start paying taxes somewhere else Why, where oil is being exploited, where those people suffered environmental degradation, where they suffered health hazardness, where they suffered oil pollution, where they eat polluted fish, drink polluted water, are you telling me that they should not be given the privilege and opportunity of having a very good health through their government? I think what is good for the goose is good for the gander. So I will appeal that we support this motion. It is a motion that has a very wonderful focus with the interests of the Nigerian people at heart. I appeal that we give it all the necessary support. Thank you, and God bless my great nation. Well, honorable members, and um, like I said before, we have had um, this tradition of looking at these issues dispassionately. And um, in my own case, I believe in the doctrine of laissez-faire, which is the basis of business, really. So if I am a businessman, 
I wouldn't want anybody to detect my operations. If it were a government undertaking, I understand all the points we're making. But for instance, as a businessman, I want to make a judgment. I want to typify this. I want to make a judgment as to where to relocate my head, head office. What incentives are there, really? Because I'll be looking at cost. What incentives are there, Honorable Kamale? Thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. I am Adamu D.U. Kamale. I represent Michika Madagal Federal Constituency. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this debate has been politicized. The fact, Mr. Speaker, this motion is very clear and simple. But because we have vested interests, it is turning into something different. First and foremost, Mr. Speaker, the rule of engagement in any company that exploits is that even at the drilling process, at the exploration process, there must be a site office. No company operates without a site office in the exploitative uh, sector. Mr. Speaker, yes, that's the rule. I'm a geologist, Mr. Speaker. I've been on the, on the wells. The rule says that you can't drill a well without even a site office. Because you have to monitor the activities of the exploitation. Mr. Speaker, that is one. Two, Mr. Speaker, what this motion is seeking is not against the interests of Nigerians. In fact, if the motion is on the other hand, assuming they are saying they shouldn't have an office in the host community, it is a source of concern. But they are saying that they should come in relation to make sure that environmental issues are addressed adequately because, Mr. Speaker, if they are far away, most of the pipelines we are having, uh, linkages we are having, and some of these issues can be easily addressed when they have uh, offices in the host communities. So, Mr. Speaker, there is no point for us to, 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 to politicize this issue. As far as this motion is concerned, Mr. Speaker, it's in the interest of our people, it's in the interest of the host communities, it's in the interest of the Niger data that produces the oil. So we're supposed to support this motion and pass it. Besides that, Mr. Speaker, there are examples. For instance, the Port Authority, it was here in Abuja. Later on, it was decided that because of effectiveness, they should be relocated to Lagos. Mr. Speaker, we have it in Lagos today. What change has it done? So, Mr. Speaker, the issue of dining with low spoon with the host community is supposed not to be encouraged by this horrible house. The oil company is supposed to be cited where they are supposed to operate and they are supposed to guide and follow the environmental regulations as specified by our laws. Mr. Speaker, let's support this motion without any sentiment. As far as we are concerned, it is in the interest of Nigerians. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll take two more for those who are supporting and, th and then we'll rule. But for those who are speaking for this motion, in view of the fact that we have freedom, can we truly constrain the operation of companies as to conduct their operations. First question. Second question is this. If we can do it, do we do it by way of a motion or by law? Those two questions must be answered. Honorable Dan, Renejo, and Chinda, and then we'll take from those who are speaking against the motion. Dan first. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, my honorable colleagues. I represent Wari Federal Constituency, Mr. Speaker. My colleagues, I'm from Delta State. Mr. Speaker, first of all, let me thank the mover of this motion. I wouldn't say it is timely, but I believe it is better late than never. This motion would have been better laid on this floor, maybe from inception of this state assembly. But that it is coming now makes it very germane for parliament to actually view It makes it germane for Parliament to actually view from all sides of the debate. Mr. Speaker, I also want to thank you for actually directing us and also directing us to focus properly on what area to actually look into when businesses are being set up. Mr. Speaker, if you have to look at it from the economic side of it, in setting up a business, 
Mr. Speaker, I would want to say that there is what you call the cash call in our oil production system in this country. Order. Honorable colleagues, order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I said I also thank you for directing our thoughts on two major issues. And first of all, has to do with the economics of production of oil. The economics of production of oil in our own country, like it is said all over the world, that the cost of producing or production of a barrel of oil in this country is higher. In fact, it is most highest in any, than any other part of the world. Why is it so, Mr. Speaker? We have to refer to what we call the cash call, which is almost like a free money to the IOCs to do whatever they like and stay wherever they are or wherever they like to stay and produce oil from wherever. Mr. Speaker, when you talk about cash call in this country, you know that the greatest debt that we owe in this country as of today is being generated from the oil industry. And that is what has informed the Minister for Petroleum State to say that the cash call has to be eradicated completely. Why did he have to say that? It is because the country is bleeding to death on this cash call business. And why are the IOC so comfortable to stay elsewhere and produce oil thousands of kilometers apart? It is because they are not contributing what they ought to contribute to the production of a barrel of oil. They are producing what they are producing with the monies from the federal government, which means that they always get free money to produce a cost of oil. Mr. Speaker, I will tell you that from if that policy been pronounced by the minister states that cash call should stop by 218, you will see most of this company relocating without even being pushed because they know that the die is cast for them and that is the end of their business. Mr. Speaker, I want to say this again that one of the most topical issues being canvassed by the Niger Delta elders when the vice president was going around is the relocation of these oil companies. Why is it so? It is because... <laughs> I'm not going to mention the name of the vice president. I'm only saying what we demanded, what the Niger Delta elders demanded of the federal government. I'm not going to say what the federal government, what the federal government replied, but. What I'm trying to say, in essence, is that if the government does not see the need for it, then there will have been need for that tour, which he undertook. The oil companies are not even arguing not to go. They are ready to go. But the major problem is the government itself. Where are the other government agencies that regulate the oil production? Where is the NMPC located? It's in Abuja. I take you to around the six or nine Niger Delta states that produce oil in this country. I take you around the nine states of the Niger Delta that produces oil and go and see the presence of NMPC in those states. It's almost like a kitchen house. Mr. Speaker, I tell you, where is Napims located? Where is the DPRO located? And why are they so comfortable living where they are living? It is because they get cheap money. Mr. Speaker, I would want to say that this motion can address by way of persuading and pers continuous persuasion of the executive to come out with a policy. The PIB that my leader has talked about does not mention anything that has to do with location and relocation of oil industry. We have looked at it. I think my leader is just trying to be smart by way of pushing it there because he knew that maybe the PIB may not see the light of the day. But what we are trying to achieve is to cure what is becoming the greatest problem of the Niger Delta region. We want to belong. Mr. Speaker, let me give you one example before I sit down. Mr. Speaker, I grew up in Worry, and I knew Shell used to be in Worry, and a couple of years ago, about five years ago, Shell relocated from Worry completely. And the moment Shell relocated from Worry, Worry became a ghost town. And up till this moment, Worry has not been able to get back to his feet as to what it used to be. It is not because of the insecurity in the region. The area is very secured like any other region in this country. Mr. Speaker, when you talk about insecurity, I all actually want to commend my leader for taking an exception to the position which was mentioned by, my, by the leader of the House. There is no part of this nation that is secure 
to the extent of saying, yes, this is the heaven where everybody can go and live as a Nigeria. We all are experiencing the same insecurity in every region. Mr. Speaker, finally, finally, that a motion can cure or not, I believe it is possible to use it to persuade the executive. It is possible for us to use it to persuade the executive. They are already working, Mr. Speaker. To the best of my knowledge, the, 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 the committee set up by the president to look into the Niger Delta issues are meeting today, variously, with all the agencies. They are working. Let us not be seen as saying, is it possible or not? And at the end of the day, they come out with a chime. We, as parliament, would need to sit up in most cases to also push and be seen as pushing. Thank you, Mr. My leader. And to be seen as continuously pushing so that we can also do and remain at the right part of history. That this parliament, under the leadership of Her Right Honorable Dagara, was one of those that actually passed a motion that persuaded the oil companies to relocate, Mr. Speaker. I therefore enjoin all members to support this motion, not because I'm from the Niger Delta. If it's happening in other regions, as my usual self, I would have equally supported it. But we need to have a feel of what we produce. That does not mean we are going to seclude every other region from benefiting. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Chinda. I represent Toby Abo Federal Constituency. I'm an equerry man from River State. Mr. Speaker, you have posed two questions. The first is whether we can determine the location of the office of a private establishment, considering that you operate a laissez-faire economy. Mr. Speaker, the answer is in the affirmative. Yes, sir, we can. And that is why we are elected. We are here to make rules which will govern the administration and ensure that we have good governance in Nigeria. And this rule includes rules that will bind businesses and operators, whether private or public, within the system. And that's why we have made the Companies and Allied Act, which regulates the operation of private companies. What's your point of order, leader? Speaker, and that is the fundamental rights of citizens and corporate bodies, which is the right to freedom of movement. So whether we're here to make laws as to where you can relocate or not, must be subject to the constitution which gives the corporate organization the freedom of movement and association. So that law that we're here to be must be subject to the constitution. And that is protected by the constitution under chapter four of the constitution, freedom of movement and freedom of association. And a, and a corporate body is a juristic person which is also entitled to that association. And forget the corporate body, there are individuals behind these organizations who are also entitled to this protection. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, Chinda knows this better, so. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Let me also correct the leader. That freedom of association is bound by the same laws that we make. It is not limitless. You have freedom of, of association to the extent, to the extent that that freedom is in tandem with the laws of the land. Because you have freedom of association, my dear leader, you cannot now give me a fist blow. So, Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, yes, I'm aware of the constitutional provision that allows for freedom of association, that allows you to operate, but yet we have laws which regulates that operation. And I have cited one of such laws. The Companies and Allied Matters Act regulates the operation of companies. Mr. Speaker, we have gone further. We even have the Nigerian content law, which we call the local content law. That law states that you must have an operational office at your place of uh, operation. Is that not a limitation? We have already made a law. Listen, what I'm telling you is that we have powers we have powers to regulate a company and insist that the company must operate in line with the laws we have made. And we have made such laws. And that law is not declared unconstitutional by any court. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, the answer to the simple question you have raised is that yes, we can regulate the operation of any company within Nigeria, including the siting of their office. Now, aside that, Mr. Speaker, you also know that we are partakers in that business. 
Those IOCs are joint companies. They belong to the federal government and the private sector. So we are interested. We want to ensure that we make better profit from our operation. We have investment as a country in those companies. Therefore, what we are saying, in tandem with economic policies, that your operation must be close to your place of raw material. We are also saying that citing your administrative office very far from your place of raw materials has also led to higher cost. And these companies deduct their total capital before the profit is shared between the federal government and the companies. And these are part of the capitals that they deduct. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, I think it is only patriotic for us to take decisions and positions outside the fact that I'm from the Niger Delta, outside the fact that those from the Niger Delta are suffering this degradation. But it is clear that if these companies operate close to their place of raw material, Nigerian government will make better and higher profit. Mr. Speaker, let me also state, I was in Port Harcourt when the Vice President visited. And it is not a hearsay, I was there when he also admitted that there is need for these companies to relocate to their places. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I believe a few days ago, in my absence, Honorable Leo Ogo moved a motion on the floor of this house, which was carried, that the, that the Vice President has no right to make a personal opinion under Section 171. No, 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 no. Honorable Leo Ogo moved a motion on the floor of this house against the Vice President for expressing an opinion. Mr. Speaker, no, 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 you move that motion here. You move that motion here. Mr. Speaker, if I may just... Privilege, privilege, privilege. Mr. Speaker, there's a motion, a standing motion that has been carried, privilege. Can we listen to the leader, please? Yes. Can you speak on your mic? Speak to the mic, please. Mr. Speaker, this House passed a resolution a few days ago saying that the Vice President had no right to express an opinion on any particular matter that he needed to go to court. It is not now wrong, a few days later, to be quoting the Vice President for expressing, if anything, an opinion. So we have to be consistent with our resolutions in the, on this floor. That motion was brought by Honorable Leo Ogo. So he cannot blow hot and cold at the same time. Thank you. I guess, leader, you mixed status. But what fell for consideration was um, the issue of whether someone sitting in executive capacity have the right under the law to interpret our laws. That was it, not holding opinion on the laws, but interpreting and saying that I can execute this one, this one is unconstitutional, or whether that is the function of the courts, where if he disagrees with any provision of our law, the base bed is for him to approach the court for interpretation. That wasn't, our, our decision wasn't on whether a member of the executive can hold or even disseminate any opinion he has on anything, but whether someone occupying an executive office that is charged with the responsibility of executing our laws is at liberty to interpret the laws as against a uh, reference to the judiciary who has the powers under our constitution to do that. So if, if Chinda is, Honorable Chinda is convinced that he was there and that he's quoting him is direct evidence, is not circumstantial, He's not quoting any sources. He's not referring to newspapers. But he's saying he's there. And as an honorable member, we're entitled to believe him until the contrary is proved. So, Chinda, please, round up so that we can move on. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, rule the leader out of order. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, having answered the first question, now the second question is whether by way of a motion we can arrive at this resolution. Again, the answer to the second question is in the affirmative. Yes, we can. 
Now, the, the essence of a motion and resolution of this House is for us to take a position on an issue. And I think that all we are doing is to let the federal government and indeed Nigerians and those who elected us to know our position on this issue. That we advise the oil companies to locate the administrative office in their place of operation. There's nothing wrong with it. Aside the resolution, if we want to amend the laws, it does not also stop us from amending the laws. Now, finally, on the issue of security, let me caution us. I, as a legislator of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I stand to say that Nigeria is safe. No part of this country is unsafe. No part. And the essence, including the Northeast, Nigeria is safe. Let me challenge anybody anywhere in the world, including the United States of America, to tell us that there is no issue of insecurity in the United States. The essence of government is, is security of lives and property. And it is not for us to tell the world that we are operating a failed state. If everywhere is safe and secure, then there will be no need for government. That's why we are here, to ensure that we continue to secure the place. Nigeria is not unsafe. If Nigeria is unsafe, we will be at war. We are not at war. So let us stop creating that impression that a particular part of this country is unsafe. If the Niger Delta is unsafe, how come they can go in there and operate? How do they still exploit oil there? If the place is unsafe, they can operate. They can exploit oil, but it is unsafe for them to reside. Yet people reside there. People still live there. Mr. Speaker, that argument cannot hold water at all. I would therefore urge us, my dear colleagues, as patriotic Nigerians, there is nothing wrong in taking a position that will bring more profit to us as a state, in taking a position that will be fair, that will be equitable to all. We're talking about exploitation of um, uh, mineral resources in the north. Would you now want to cite the head office in Port Harcourt while operation is going on in Sokoto? It is wrong. Anywhere in the world, it's not a standard. We will spend more if we do that. And therefore, I will urge, I will urge you, my dear colleagues, to support this motion. It is harmless. Let us leave our personal sentiments. It is the proper thing to do. It is an international standard. Mr. Speaker, I support the motion and pray that this motion will fly. Thank you, sir. Honorable Funche, I did do it. Those who are speaking, I present the record do a kitty. Okay, Ro. it's a federal constituency of Kwara State. Um, Mr. Speaker, I would like to speak against this motion. First of all, because the motion seems to be confused about exactly what it is speaking and uh, seeking, and I will clarify that. First of all, it is impossible to carry out any kind of drilling or manufacturing or any exploitative activity without an operations office. So first of all, we need to remove the issue of operations office from this motion because it's not possible to have, an op to have any kind of operation without an office that will be guiding it. So I put it to this my honorable colleagues, that there are operational offices everywhere operations are taking place. Everywhere any kind of drilling activity is taking place. Once again, I want to bring my usual position to this house. We need to be making economic arguments and not sentimental arguments. Mr. Speaker, my honorable colleagues, Every enterprise has to make an economic cost-benefit analysis and decide precisely where its operations can best be managed administratively. I will give an example from my previous private life in the manufacturing industry. There are many manufacturing entities that are all over Nigeria. However, most manufacturing entities maintain 
headquarters in a central city. One, because of access to port activities. Two, because of access to banking activities. And three, because of access to the markets. Therefore, we must stop this notion that once there is some exploitation taking place in our area, we must insist, of course, that there must be operational offices. We don't need to tell companies that they must have operational offices. They know they must. They cannot function without operational offices. However, we must be careful not to create a situation where entities will come into this country, whether international or local, and they will be afraid that the policies of this government, including the National Assembly, will begin to impinge upon their freedom to make economic decisions for their own businesses. If we truly love this nation, we have to give economic entities enough freedom to make economic decisions without us politicizing and sentimentalizing some of these decisions all in a bit to appear to we are supporting. We are losing the argument in the process of making it. I would urge my colleagues to think carefully about this motion and to vote against it because it is we are going down a slippery slope where we will begin to dissuade people from investing in this nation for the exact reason that we will not allow them to operate unfettered and we will not allow them to make economic decisions to, 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 to um, advance the cause of their own businesses. I thank you, my honorable colleagues. You know, only one slide. Eh? I'll choose my landlord, though, because I used to live in Lagos mainland. So I'm sorry, Honorable Rotimi. <laughs> Jimo. I remain Jimo Adrahim Olajide. I represent Lagos mainland federal constituency. Honorable Speaker, first and foremost, I want to thank you for the wisdom you have applied today. I want to thank you for the voice of reasoning that you have allowed to prevail in this case. Honestly speaking, I admire you. And I want to say this, Mr. Speaker, this issue is very important, very germane, and we must be considerate. We must think about whatever thing we are thinking today. Even if we want to make law, we must think of the law we want to make that can stand the test of time. This is not a B, but it's a motion. A motion must be reasonable. A motion must be realistic. A motion should be a guide for every single Nigeria. This is an house, an institution recognized by the law for the fact that Mr. Vice President has expressed his own opinion. His opinion cannot supersede that of the institution called legislature. This is a body, this is an institution that must be respected. And we must not be parochial in whatever thing we are talking about. We must not be sentimental. This motion is about business decision. That must, we must have an elastic thought on it before it can be passed into a resolution. And I want to say this, Mr. Speaker, for the fact that we are calling the operation and administrative offices of this corporate body, all industry, to be domiciled in various regions or various states where they are operating is not enough. Are we saying if those companies are to move NNPC that has been established by law of parliament, we now have to leave Abuja and go to that place as an operational equator? We have to think about it before it can be passed. Let the voice of reasoning, the voice of wisdom, and the voice of realistic prevail in this circumstance. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. God bless you. So the only... Yes, I remain good luck up here. I represent the oil producing federation. I'm from Mimo State. Mr. Speaker, I want to thank you particularly for presiding 
um, over this motion in a manner that has called for um, deep input and robot debate. I want to thank my distinguished colleagues for contributing to this debate and in fact for actually supporting this debate because Mr. Speaker, most of the people who spoke against this motion actually spoke in support of this motion because all the issues that are supposed to be issues against this motion are sentimental and completely outside the letters and spirits of this motion. Mr. Speaker, this motion has unnecessarily been politicized and polarized, which to my mind is actually uncalled for. The issue of insecurity cannot be the reason why oil companies are not having offices where they operate. Mr. Speaker, issue of insecurity is a later day issue. Issue of insecurity started late in the 1902, 19, whatever, late century. In the 1960s and 50s, oil companies have been operating in the Niger Delta region. And of course, they did not have their offices. Mr. Speaker, time has come that as a house, as an arm of government, if we mean well for this country. <laughs> Honorable Goodluck, um, you know by our rules you cannot speak twice on a motion. I thought that there was just one information they wanted to give. So I will not uh, allow you to re-debate the motion. So um, if you have one point that you wanted to clarify, that was why I called on you to make the clarification. But um, it's like you want to continue debating the motion. And uh, I'm afraid I will have to stop you at this point in time. Um, we have amendments from, he is not on the floor. Is to seek that we amend the prayer by taking an additional prayer. I know that the motion will fly that we forward the resolution to the Senate for concurrence. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Honorable France, in favor of the amendment, say aye. aye. Those against it, say nay. The nays of it. Next amendment is for... ...federal constituency. I'm from Kosovo State. Mr. Speaker, to forestall waste by cash call and encourage economic and social development. I rise to second the motion, the amendment ably moved by um, Honorable Dan Asuko. I so second, Mr. Speaker. Those in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Those against it say nay. The nays of it. Those who are saying I should say I. Aye. Aye. Those against it say nay. nay. The nays have it. It's very clear, except you can't hear you. Mr. Speaker, point of order.